assalamu alaikum dear students i hope you are all fine by the grace of almighty allah i welcome you all to the 20th lecture of thermodynamics 2 lecture 20 the contents of lecture 20 are loss in available energy increase in unavailable energy numerical problems and conceptual question and answer so up till now we have a basic understanding of what is and what exergy is and what is meant by available energy and in this lecture we will understand how that available energy is decreased or there is a loss in available energy and as you know that available energy and unavailable energies are both are reciprocative and opposite of each other therefore as there is an increase in available energy then there will be an decrease in unavailable energy and when there is a loss in or decrease in available energy then there is always an increase in unavailable energy so they both are opposite of each other and as one energy increases so the other one decreases if available energy will increase then unavailable that is the opposite of available will decrease so we will find relations of uh, mathematical relation how we will find the the quantity of Uh, decrease in available energy and increase in unavailable energy then we will solve a numerical problem and we will discuss some concept conceptual question answer at the last as well so first we will discuss about loss in available energy so uh, the term uh, may be written as loss in available energy or decreased in available energy so they both mean same so in certain numerical problem you will be asked to calculate the loss in available energy and decreased in available energy so both uh, terms mean the same so decreased in available energy when heat is transferred through a finite temperature difference so uh, as you can remember uh, in the previous lecture as well we have discussed the finite body and finite temperature difference term so whenever we have a finite body so as the energy is rejected from the body so its temperature will decrease so it's uh, the opposite of finite body is reservoir so in the reservoir however uh, how much energy we inject or reject we introduce or deduce the temperature of the reservoir remain constant but in contrast to the reservoir we have a thermal energy finite body so whenever a certain amount of heat is rejected uh, so for example you are uh, the arrow suggests that heat is exiting the body so q amount of heat is exiting the body and as you see that the temperature of the body is decreased so whenever a certain amount of energy will get out or eject from a body the temperature of a finite body will always decreased so consider a body as shown so here a body is shown let the initial temperature of a body is t1 so the temperature initial temperature is t1 of that body and the available energy of the body at temperature t1 is ae1 so ae is the abbreviation of available energy so uh, let the body temperature is t1 and as the available energy depend on the temperature of the body so at t1 the available energy of the body is ae1 now some of the heat is rejected from the body and the temperature of the body is reduced to t2 so as you can see the q amount of energy is ejected or 
get out or rejected from the body and absorbed into the surrounding or atmosphere so as the q amount of energy is leaves the body so the heat total heat content of the body will decrease and consequently as that is a finite body so the temperature is reduced so now the reduced temperature is t2 so that is the uh, reduced temperature body is represented over here so now the temperature of the body is t2 and the available energy content of the body is ae2 so here it is written that as t1 is greater than t2 therefore the content of available energy ae1 is greater than ae2 so now a schematic diagram of a heat engine is shown on the right hand side and we want to calculate a relation or an expression for decreased in available energy or loss in available energy so now we are discussing the case 1 so in the previous slide we have discussed the two cases separately uh, for a body at that is at a temperature of t1 and a body that is temperature as t2 so the body temperature is reduced when some of the amount of heat is rejected from the body now here we have is schematic diagram of a heat engine and as you can see the heat engine is attached to two thermal energy reservoirs so the source or high temperature thermal energy reservoir is at temperature t1 and the sink is surrounding so surrounding or ambient air is acting as a sink or low temperature thermal energy reservoir and the temperature of the surrounding is t not and q amount of heat is absorbed by the heat engine from source and q not amount of heat is rejected by the heat engine into the surrounding and w is the amount of work that is produced by the heat engine so that w is written as w useful and that useful work is known as available energy so as we are discussing case 1 so the available energy is represented by ae1 and q not the amount of heat or energy rejected by the heat engine into the surrounding is the amount of energy that is unavailable so here unavailable energy is represented by this arrow so here q not is the amount of unavailable energy whereas w useful is the amount of available energy so by utilizing or according to the first law of thermodynamics so that q is the amount of energy that is entered into the heat engine w is the amount of energy that is turned into useful work whereas q not is the amount of energy that is rejected into the atmosphere so here q is equal to available energy 1 plus q not q not is the unavailable energy so now we will discuss the case 2 so now here we have two reservoir as you can see so reservoir 1 is at a temperature of t1 and reservoir 2 is at a temperature of t2 so let's suppose the temperature t1 is greater than t2 and now the heat engine is absorbing heat from reservoir t2 that is at a lesser temperature than t1 so in the previous slide the heat engine was directly connected to reservoir 1 that is at temperature of t1 and the in the previous slide that heat engine was connected to t1 and absorbing t1 amount of q amount of heat from the temperature t1 and in this slide the heat engine is connected to reservoir t2 
so the reservoir has is at a temperature of t2 and now absorbing q amount of heat from reservoir t2 so here the difference is in the previous slide the higher temperature thermal energy reservoir t1 was directly connected to t heat engine and now the t1 reservoir is first connected to reservoir t2 a q amount of heat is transferring from reservoir t1 to t2 and then q amount of heat is transferring from reservoir that is a temperature of t2 into the heat engine for example if we want to correspond the temperature with the numbers for example let's suppose t1 is equal to 1000 and t2 is equal to 800 so i will write it down so let's suppose the t1 is at a temperature of 1000 and that is a temperature of 800 so now in the previous slide the heat engine was directly connected to the 1000 to the reservoir that is at a temperature of 1000 and in current slide the heat engine is now connected to a reservoir that is currently at a temperature of 800 so now the delta t between these two reservoir is 200 degree centigrade and the heat that is rejected to the surrounding is q not is the same amount of heat and w useful is the amount of work that is produced by the heat engine now the w useful is equal to ae2 that is available energy a2 in the previous slide that heat engine was directly connected to this thermal energy reservoir and in the current slide that heat engine is now connected to low temperature that is at a temperature of 800 so now we want to find what is the difference when a heat engine is connected to 1000 degree centigrade thermal energy reservoir and when the heat engine is connected to 800 degree centigrade thermal energy reservoir so the useful amount of work is different now uh, let's suppose the Uh, useful amount of work in the previous slide was ae1 that is available energy 1 and in the current slide the useful amount of energy is ae2 so according to first law of thermodynamics we have the relation q is equal to w plus q not q is the amount of energy that is supplied by the reservoir and w is the amount of energy that is converted into useful work and q not is the amount of energy that is rejected to the atmosphere and now here useful work is equal to available energy 2 and in the previous slide we have known that available energy 1 is greater than available energy 2 so now if we represent the process of case 1 and case 2 on the ts diagram so as you know that the carnot heat engine or cyclic heat engine process is represented by a rectangular or quadrilateral therefore for case 1 the light blue color square is represented so the rectangle a b c d represent the case 1 so and the rectangle g h c i represent the case 2 so here we have case 1 and case 2 so now the interesting thing to note here is that when we are talking about case 1 so
so the higher temperature or the temperature of thermal energy reservoir that is at a higher temperature is t1 and the temperature of sink is t0 and similarly when we are talking about case 2 the temperature of source is t2 and sink is t0 so i hope you can see a dotted portion line that is behind that uh, light blue colors rectangle is also a rectangle that is that has a more horizontal area than the vertical one so here you can note that uh, the area a b c d represent the available energy for the case one and the area g h c i represent the available energy for case 2 so in the upcoming slide we will also discuss if you have are given a ts diagram then how you can calculate the loss in the available energy or the to calculate available energy of any case for case 1 the you will have to calculate the area of abcd rectangle and for case 2 to calculate the available energy you will have to calculate the area of GHCI rectangle to calculate the available energy now in the similar manner the area CDEF represent the value of unavailable energy for case 1 and the area CIEJ represent the case to unavailable energy so now our main objective is to calculate how much energy we have lost or how much there is a decrease in available energy between two cases the case one is when a heat engine is absorbing heat when it is connected to t1 temperature reservoir and what when the heat engine absorb energy when it is connected to t2 temperature reservoir source so as both have a certain amount of temperature difference t2 is less than t1 so there must be a decrease in the available energy so our main objective is to find what that value is or how we can find the value of decreased in available energy with the help of ts diagram so here it is written that available energy 1 is the area ABCD I have already told you ABCD rectangle area represent the available energy of case 1 and area CDEF represent the unavailable energy for case 2 so available energy is the useful work and unavailable energy is the amount of heat that is rejected into the atmosphere so in the previous slide that is represented with a symbol q0 and now we are case uh, when we talk about case 2 then the area g h c i represent the available energy of case 2 so available energy of case 2 is g h c i and it is the amount of work that is produced by the heat engine useful work and when that heat engine that is connected to the source of t2 temperature has an unavailable energy of ciej ciej is the that rectangle c i e j so that represent the area that ciej uh, will represent the amount of unavailable energy when heat engine is connected to temperature t2 so as you can see the amount of unavailable energy for case 1 is less than the amount of unavailable energy for case 2 so now we know that the in case 2 the unavailable energy is greater than unavailable energy of case 1 So here is a mathematical derivation to calculate the loss in the 
available energy so here increase in unavailable energy is equal to loss in available energy so as uh, i have already told you available and unavailable energy are both opposite of each other so as one increases the other will have to decrease or there will you can either write loss in available energy or decrease in available energy so they both mean the same so here we have calculated or we want to find the relation to represent the loss in the available energy so that is the ts diagram that we have discussed in the previous slide as well so the both rectangles one with the uh, blue color and uh, represent the case one and one with the diagonal lines of gray color represent the case two so hopefully you can see the rectangular behind the light blue color so that represent the case two and the a b c d represent the case one available energy c d e j represent the unavailable energy of case one g h c i represent the available energy of case two c i e j represent the unavailable energy of case two uh, all that is written in the previous slide i just I have just repeated this and now in the x axis as that is an entropy so here we have discussed the change of entropy for case 1 that is equal to ef and the change of entropy for case 2 ds2 that is equal to ej okay the length or the distance between ef represent the change of entropy for case 1 and the distance between e and j represent the change of entropy for case 2 now we get back to the calculations so increase in unavailable energy is equal to loss in available energy so increase in unavailable energy is unavailable energy 2 minus unavailable energy 1 so in the previous slide we have proved that the uh, area of c i e j is greater than c d e f because that much area is greater so therefore unavailable energy for case 2 is greater than case 1 so according to the first law of thermodynamics q is equal to w plus q not w is the useful amount of work and q not is the amount of work that is rejected to the atmosphere so now uh, we will calculate the difference of entropy or ds or change of entropy for case 1 and case 2 individually so for change the difference of entropy or change of entropy for case 1 is equal to q not over t not so as they both are the thermal energy reservoir in the last lecture of entropy uh, we have Uh, find out or calculated the uh, different uh, number of relation for different uh, for finite body to calculate the entropy of finite body we have a different relation to calculate the entropy change for ideal gas we have a different couple of different relations and now to calculate the entropy of thermal energy reservoir we have uh, q not over t that is the relation to calculate the entropy of A reservoir. So, Q naught is unavailable energy. One divided by T naught. T naught is the temperature of ambient or sink. So, unavailable energy is equal to T naught del S one. So that T naught is moved to the left hand side, and unavailable one, unavailable energy of case one is equal to T naught del S one. and similarly to calculate the change of entropy for case 2 as it is also a thermal energy reservoir so its relation is also q not over t not for case 2 and q not is the unavailable energy for case 2 divided by t not is the temperature of sink so all these values are written on the schematic diagram for the heat engine uh, you can verify uh, them from there as well so unavailable energy for case 2 is equal to t not del s2 
so del s1 is the change of entropy for case 1 and del s2 is the change of entropy of case 2 so here we have the linear displacement is shown the change of entropy for case 1 and 2 and here we have a mathematical relation as well so increase in the unavailable energy is equal to unavailable energy for case 2 minus or negative unavailable energy for case 1 so the difference of both unavailable energy will represent the increase in the unavailable energy so we have cal mathematically calculated both their relation individually so we'll, we will plug in the, their values for unavailable energy 2 and unavailable energy 1 for, so the unavailable energy for case 2 is T naught del S2 minus T naught del S1 is the unavailable energy for case 1 so increase in the unavailable energy is equal to T naught we have taken it common and del S2 minus del S1 so increase in unavailable energy or loss in available energy we have a mathematical relation of T naught del S2 minus del S1 so here we have the relation for to calculate the increase in unavailable energy or loss in the available energy so you have to keep in mind whenever in the numerical you will you are asked to calculate either increase of unavailable energy or loss in available energy or decrease in available energy so for all these three terms you have the same mathematical relation so you may be asked to calculate increase in unavailable energy you may be asked to calculate loss in available energy or you may be asked to calculate decrease in the available energy so for all these cases you will be you will be using that relation t naught is equal to del s2 minus del s1 so that is the second uh, method to calculate the unavailable loss in available energy so the first one was from the ts diagram so the portion difj represent the loss in the available energy so the second method with the help of entropy is T naught del S2 minus del S1 so that is the second method to calculate the loss in the available energy so now we will find the relation with the help of efficiency relation so decreased in available energy so I have already told you uh, there may be in your textbook as well so in certain points or in certain uh, places uh, there is mentioned as loss as loss in available energy or decreased in available energy or increase in unavailable energy so all these terms mean the same so either one of that is written you uh, must be clear what are you calculating so now we are going to find the third relation to find the loss in the available energy so decrease in available energy is equal to available energy for case 1 minus available energy for case 2 so to just a revision or to make you remember that the case 1 was when the heat engine is directly connected to temperature T1 and in case 2 the heat engine was connected to the temperature T2 thermal energy reservoir source so case 1 the temperature of heat engine is T1 that is greater than T2 for example in the previous slide we have mentioned it well uh, for case 1 we have taken it 1000 degree centigrade and for case 2 we have taken that temperature as 800 so now we have a relation for efficiency as output over input so the output is useful work is w and q is the amount of heat that is supplied by the source or th high temperature thermal energy reservoir so the relation for reversible heat engine efficiency is 1 minus tl over th tl is the temperature of sink and th is the temperature of source and when we are calculating for case 1 <coughs> So the useful work is W1 
and the so so source temperature is t1 and sink temperature is t0 so w1 is equal uh, we multiply that q that is in the denominator in the left hand side to the right hand side term so w1 is equal to q into 1 minus t0 over t1 and w2 is equal to q into 1 minus t0 over t2 so in case 1 the source temperature is t1 and in case 2 the source temperature is t2 so now the decrease in the available energy is available energy for case 1 minus available energy for case 2 so we have uh, calculated in the term of efficiency uh, the individual relation for the available energy of your case 1 and available energy of case 2 so we will subtract them and the relation that uh, represents the decrease in the available energy is equal to t naught multiplied by uh, or, uh, t naught into minus q over t1 plus q over t2 so that is the third relation that we have found out to calculate the loss in the available energy or decrease in available energy or increase in unavailable energy note decrease in available energy or loss in available energy or increase in unavailable energy or represent the same concept so i have already told you that these three terms mean the same their relation for calculation is also the same in numerical it may be asked in either of the name to calculate you may be used the above relation so that is the third relation we have found out up till now and now we will So now for the TS diagram, so here if you look closely, uh, it the blue light blue color rectangle represents the case one. Uh, we have discussed that in the previous slide as well, and case two represent the uh, that rectangle GHCI. So available energy for case one is A B C D, and the available energy for case two is GHCI and unavailable energy for case 1 is CDEF and unavailable energy for case 2 is CIEJ and now if you are given the TS diagram and you are asked to uh, mark or mention or calculate so how you will calculate the loss in the available energy so here it is written that area CDEF represents loss of available energy for case 1 and area CIEJ represent the loss of available energy for case 2. So in the previous slide as well that the difference between the both the unavailable energy represent the increase in available energy. So increase in unavailable energy or loss in available energy means the same. So the mathematical relation to calculate the loss of available energy we have tried in the previous slide that is decrease in available energy is equal to T naught minus Q over T1 plus Q over T naught and it represents the area here D I F J. So the light blue color diagonal lines that represent the area of loss in the available energy. So that is another method from for the, from the TS diagram. So you can find out the value of loss in available energy with the help of area. So now the to calculate the relation for the loss in available energy in term of entropy. So loss in available energy that relation we have already tried T naught is equal to del S2 minus del S1. So as the change of entropy for the universe is equal to change of entropy for the system plus change of entropy of the surrounding. So let's suppose we are discussing the reversible case. So del S surrounding is equal to 0 and del S universe is equal to del S2 minus del S1. So del S2 minus del S1 represent the change of entropy for the universe and the universe is an isolated system therefore loss in the available energy is equal to T naught del S universe 
because del s2 minus del s1 is equal to del s universe so we have replaced the value of del s2 minus del s1 with the change of entropy of universe and for irreversible relation so irreversible process that we know that the del s universe is equal to s generation because in the irreversible process there is an entropy generation so loss in available energy is equal to t naught s generation so these are also uh, a different relation to calculate the loss in the available energy so if we then we have been given an irreversible process so we will use that relation t naught s generation term to calculate the loss in available energy if we are given the entropy terms so if we are given a del s2 and del s1 so we will use that first relation and if we are given the entropy change for the isolatory system then we will calculate the change of entropy of universe and multiply it with the t naught or the sink temperature or the ambient temperature to calculate the loss of available energy so all these are the different method and we will utilize or use the tool or the relation whatever the scenario or case we have been given in the numerical or asked to solve so uh, we have uh, we have already discussed the ts diagram we have a uh, drive the relation for the efficiency relation and we have drive the relation for the entropy for the universe and change of entropy for the universe and for the irreversible process we will use the s generation or gener entropy generation term to calculate the loss of available energy so here we have change of entropy term change of universe entropy entropy generation here we have the loss of available energy in term of efficiencies and loss of available energy in term of area so these are the five different relation to calculate the loss in available energy decrease in available energy or increase in unavailable energy so all three these three uh, terms mean the same and to find out either of these value you can use any of these five relation uh, as per the question numerical data you have been given so these are the five relation we have discussed it in detail now we will uh, discuss it more in detail when we will be solving the numerical problems so loss in available energy is t naught del s universe and loss in available energy for t naught s gen so uh, del s universe for isolated system and for irreversible process we will be using the t naught s generation term note the above equation represent the degradation of quality of energy due to entropy generation in all spontaneous process so first of all you must remember what is a spontaneous process is spontaneous process is a process that occurs on its own and it is a an irreversible process so for irreversible process there is always an entropy generation so whenever there is an entropy generation term there is always a degradation of in the quality of energy so the above re both relations represent that the quality of energy has been degraded due to entropy generation because that is a spontaneous or irreversible process so as we have already studied in the entropy chapter that for all irreversible process the value of entropy generation is greater than 0 therefore this suggests that the quality of energy is degraded as well so in the entropy gen uh, chapter the last chapter we have discussed for the irreversible process there is always a term that is introduced or added into the entropy that is an entropy generation term so its value is greater than 0 for all the reversible process and for reversible its value is 0 but uh, if you are talking about the spontaneous process then the spontaneous process is irreversible so for example the 
transfer of heat from high temperature to low temperature is a spontaneous process so you cannot move or transfer heat from low to high temperature uh, unless and until you supply work so to transfer heat from high temperature to low temperature you don't have to supply any amount of work and the heat will automatically or spontaneously transfer from high temperature to low temperature and that is a spontaneous process and it is an irreversible process so when that process is happening as it is a irreversible process therefore the entropy will be generated due to the irreversibility present due to the irreversibility present within the process so that entropy term will represent the degradation of quality of energy so when the heat uh, we have a con the total content of heat that is a high at a high temperature has a certain amount of quality of energy and when the heat some of the heat content is lost in the environment and entropy is generated due to irreversibility so now the total heat content is somehow reduced so due to the reduce of heat content the energy quality is degraded so uh, that is the concept of this point so as due to the irreversible process as gen is increased therefore loss of available energy will also increase at both they are directly proportional to each other so as generation is the term that arises due to irreversibility within the process so as the process is more and more irreversible so the term loss of available energy will also increase so irreversibility decide what is the value of s gen so more the process is irreversible the greater the value of s generation and the greater the value of loss of available energy and they both are directly proportional to each other note according to first law of thermodynamics so the thermal energy at a high temperature has same meaning when compared to equal amount of thermal energy at low temperature so uh, for example uh, we have a thermal reservoir at a temperature of 1000 degree centigrade and we have a thermal reservoir that is at a temperature of 800 degree centigrade and we have both connected with a heat engine at heat engine absor absorbing 100 kJ of energy from high temperature reservoir that there is a temperature of 1000 degree centigrade i will write it down so here we have a 1000 degree centigrade and here we have a reservoir that is at a 800 degree centigrade a heat engine that is also heat engine is connected to both and it is absorbing 100 kilojoule of energy from both reservoirs so that is a temperature of 1000 and that is a temperature of 800 so same amount of heat is absorbing by the heat engine so when we are discussing that concept according to the first law of thermodynamics that doesn't differentiate the both process because it doesn't concern the temperature of uh, source it already is just consider the amount of energy that is entering into the heat engine so as both heat engine is receiving same amount of energy so according to first law then there is no difference between these two engine so that is why the first law is only known or consider the effect of quantitative so first law is quantitative law and now if we 
talk about or discuss the same scenario in accordance with the second law of thermodynamics then the second law of thermodynamics suggests that the, the temp higher temperature has more significance when compared to the same amount of thermal energy at a low temperature so in case one when a heat engine is absorbing 100 kJ coming from 1000 reservoir and a heat engine in case B when it is absorbing 100 kJ of energy from 800 degree centigrade then second law suggests that the case 1 is more significant because it has a higher temperature source so that is why the second law B use the word for quality so second law suggests the quality of energy so qualitative law is known second law of thermodynamics is also known as qualitative law now we will discuss some conceptual question answers in a turbine what is the source of exergy so uh, we have already discussed the operation of turbine so here we have asked what is the source of available energy or availability within a turbine so the flow into the turbine is the source it provides the condition that allows the turbine to give work output if the turbine exit flow has useful exergy or energy we can write the source as the inlet flow exergy minus the exit flow exergy so this fluid that is flowing into the tur turbine will provide the available energy so if somehow the flow leaving the turbine also have a certain amount of available energy then that we will uh, find the network and we will minus the exit flow energy in a pump what is the source of exergy or in the pump what gains exergy so there are the two main uh, question that are asked on the different uh, places in the book so the conceptual question asked are both have the same answer so I have put them together as well so the shaft work in the input that drives the pump which in turn pushes on the flow to the to generate a high pressure exit flow so as the function of pump is to increase the pressure so the shaft work or displacement of provide the uh, fluid with the higher pressure at the exit the increase in the flow energy in the desired output that is expressing the increase in pressure in term of exergy so the higher pressure exit flow is desired output when we express that in term of availability it becomes the increase in the flow exergy that is the output that is expressing the increase in pressure in term of exergy so the main concept here is that the function of pump is to increase the pressure so the pump is a passive device or work input device we have to supply work to operate that pump so the shaft work or uh, you may be asking the reciprocating pump pump or the shaft work or the electrical energy supplied to the pump utilize that energy to drive the pump so that energy we have given or input to the pump will be utilized to increase the pressure at the exit so here the entire that passage term uh, means that the energy supplied to the pump will be transferred into the fluid to increase the pressure so the exit pressure is always greater than the inlet pressure at the pump for example the exit pressure is 5 psi and the inlet is 1 psi so the pressure increased by the 4 psi is only due to the energy we have supplied to the pump so the availability or increased of energy or exergy is due to the energy supplied to the pump so in the heat engine what is the source of exergy generally it is the high temperature heat transfer however if the rejected heat transfer at a low temperature has any useful energy or exergy we can also count the difference at the source so as you know that the heat engine absorb energy from high temperature energy reservoir and some of that energy will be converted to useful work so that useful work is actually the exergy 
for that heat engine and rest of the energy is rejected by the heat engine into the low temperature reservoir if somehow that rejected energy also contains some amount of uh, heat content or temperature then we will use that as a difference so for example 100 kJ of energy is absorbed by the heat engine and uh, 40 kW uh, 100 kJ of energy was absorbed by the heat engine 40 kJ was transferred to exergy or useful work and 60 kW is ejected or rejected to the sink so the difference is 100 minus 60 so 40 is the amount of exergy or available work or useful work by the heat engine all the energy in the ocean is that available so the answer is that uh, we have a vast ocean in the world so why can't we use that energy so it is asked that is that energy is available or not so the simple answer is no since the since the ocean is then at an ambient temperature so uh, if we want to use a heat engine to produce work so heat engine required a temperature difference so the temperature of ocean is the ambient temperature or the atmospheric temperature so no work can be produced by the heat engine however as the air is flowing so we have a wave energy and tidal energy so different other uh, equipment or operators or devices are utilized to extract energy from the ocean so uh, if we are purely talking in regard to thermodynamics so uh, we cannot uh, absorb energy from the ocean but there are other renewable energy ways so when you will be studying the subject of renewable energy then you will be discussing or studying the, uh, the those devices that utilize to extract energy from the ocean with the help of wave energy tidal energy and other there is a wind portion as well in the coastal area as well so wind turbines are also present so with the help of temperature difference so in the bottom of the sea so certain uh, it's a specific portion you may might be uh, gain a temperature difference that will uh, be a minute however so and if you find a temperature difference then you may use a heat engine to extract energy uh, but th that case is very limited or it is a very less percentage so uh, the simple answer is no you might not able to extract energy from the ocean purely regarding the thermodynamics due to the temperature difference however other method may be used to extract energy from the ocean as well so now we will discuss some numerical problem so during a thermodynamic process 100 kJ of heat is transferred from a reservoir at 100, 800 Kelvin to a sink that is 400 Kelvin. The ambient temperature is 300 Kelvin. Calculate the loss in the energy. So that is the same case in a uh, case two scenario. So we have uh, already calculated or derived the relation for these type of questions. So here we have a uh, thermal energy reservoir that is at 800 Kelvin temperature so it is uh, giving heat to 800, 400 Kelvin uh, reservoir and that is giving heat, a heat engine connected to 400 Kelvin reservoir so for heat engine the source is 400 Kelvin and sink is 300 Kelvin some useful amount of energy will be turned into work and other will be rejected as unavailable energy into sink so 300 kelvin is the dead state so we have already discussed what is the dead state so so uh, we have to calculate the loss in the energy so the relations to calculate the available energy is q into 
1 minus t naught over t so uh, these that relation we already know that with the help of efficiency relation we have derived that relation so loss in available energy is equal to available energy 1 minus available energy 2 so what will be the available energy 1 and what will be the available energy 2 so available energy 1 will be when that heat engine will be directly connected to 800 kelvin source and available energy 2 is that when that heat engine is connected to 400 kelvin source so we will plug in the values available energy 1 when the source is 800 kelvin and available energy 2 when the source is 400 kelvin reservoir so loss in available energy is equal to 37.5 kilojoules so the same question uh, now we will utilize the relation for the entropy for the same uh, numerical problem so you now know how to utilize the, both these relation in the previous slide for the same relation we have utilized the relation for the uh, available energy so the difference of available energy represent the loss in available energy now we will utilize the relation of entropy so we will see how that uh, the relation of entropy is used here so the relation for entropy is equal to t naught q t2 minus q t1 so here we know that the t1 is 800 kelvin temperature and t2 is the 400 kelvin temperature so when we plug in the values for t2 and t1 and q is the amount of heat that is absorbed by the heat engine so the loss in available energy is same so here we have utilized the expression for entropy So the home assignment for lecture number 20 is all students are advised to go through example problem of each topic discussed in this lecture. So you know uh, that uh, we have uh, derived the different relation to calculate the loss of available energy in this, in this lecture and we have uh, discussed a couple of example and conceptual question answer from the book. So you are advised to go through other example and some of the uh, question that are in the exercise uh, in the, your textbook and you must submit a handwritten lecture summary report. So you will have to submit a lecture summary report so you can write it on paper and scan it and send it to my email id and you are also advised to prepare this lecture thoroughly as there may be a question answer session uh, when there will be online session so you may be asked a question uh, from this lecture so you may prepare this as well so that will also help you in a viva final viva as well so that is all for this lecture and uh, you take care and allah hafiz